mapping drives using login scripts again we must make sure we log in as admin as admin has the will have the rights to edit login scripts so we'll change our user back to admin it is inconvenient to log in and log out as admin in order to manipulate login scripts but that's the only reason only way we can do it if we only have one client okay so let's start the go console one again let's browse to our container again we'll be editing the container as it doesn't matter which uh, login script we modify as when we're learning the commands and obviously the reason we would use one login script over another are depending on what you required login script for in this case a container login script will be executed for all members all users within that container so if you remember that was where we left off before let's use the map command the map command is just simply map in this case we want to map a particular resource in if you remember we had actually created a couple of folders earlier a homes directory apps directory and a student files directory the student files is the area where we will be sharing files to students and lecturers basically similar to your L drive so let's do that we'll map student drive as the L drive L colon equals then the path to the student files and obviously we could type the path in and obviously we can use examples from our notes to actually type in the path or use a UNC to type in the path but the easiest way for us to get the syntax right is to actually browse for the path so if I get uh, if you when you're doing this in a test you will just click start run backslash backslash server name enter it will bring up all the volumes of that server assuming you're logged in with a user who has the rights to see all those volumes currently we're logged in as admin so we do so remember those folders were created in the data volume there's the student files folder that we want to map so if we double click on that you see that the whole path is there for us if we copy it and paste it that's basically a standard drive mapping that will map the L drive to DA1 data the data volume to a, f a folder called student files enter and that's it we could also use the map command to map someone's home directory in this case let's map a user's home directory as their h drive equals and we'll instead of typing the path for someone's home directory which will be different for every user account and if you remember this is a container user uh, container login script which will be applied to many user accounts so a individual path for a particular user's home directory will be invalid for another user so therefore let's use a variable and if you don't remember a variable is a tool that we can use to make a very general login script be very specific for a particular user in this case the, uh, the variable home directory will be substituted by the path to that particular user's home directory we can also use the map command to map search drives and if you forgot what a search drive is a search drive will actually be added this drive mapping will be added to the user's path variable on their workstation meaning that they can execute commands or programs from this area from any location on their file system so we'll use the map because it's a search drive we must insert the search drive we don't assign a letter we assign a position a position from one meaning right at the top of the search path meaning that it's the first place they search to 16 which is the very last spot in the search path okay so by putting 16 it doesn't necessarily be uh, doesn't necessarily insert it as position 16 it just inserts it in the last position so sometimes order of the search is important as you might have multiple instances of a executable file if it's in the last position it may never be executed if it, a ver another version is found elsewhere so s16 in our case is fine equals to let's again use the browsing function to find the right 
the right path. So we click run backslash backslash server name DA1 for our server the data volume and it's the applications that we want to map a search drive to so again we can copy the path that's in our address bar and we can substitute it in so if you can if you walk if you go through this with me you have them mapping their L drive to a student files area you're mapping a H drive to the user's particular home directory and you're mapping the apps folder as a search drive for the uh, users at this point we should put some documentation in as it is when a login script becomes uh, complicated it is hard for us to remember what each section is doing so we can actually use some uh, documentation in the form of a remark so the remark is something that's not executed as a command is not displayed to the user it is basically a comment that we will make within this login script to explain explain what this login script is trying to do so that in six months time or if someone else wants to follow in our footsteps they will be able to understand what we are trying to achieve for example I'll put a remark for the command that's to, to come greet users with correct greeting and greets them by their login name it will then tell the user the date and time as well as the name of the day as you can see uh, after the rem command the comment is in plain English, something easy to understand for the person who's going to read it. Okay, so for the next part, I'll put another rem to explain what the next command is doing. So I'll say, we'll map the student files folder as the L drive for the user. And again, RAM will map the user's home directory for each user. And again, we'll map the apps folder as a search oops search drive for the user okay once we're happy with our comments as in I, I call these comments basically documentation documentation that's in place meaning that it's documenting the thing that you're editing in order for these drive mappings to work the users must have access to the resources we are mapping. Remember we just created those uh, folders earlier, we did not actually assign any rights so therefore before we can actually test the login scripts are working correctly we must assign the appropriate rights. So for for the student files, we, if you remember that both lecturers and students need access obviously students need to only be able to read and execute the files whereas lecturers need to be able to change, modify, create new and delete old files so let's actually change the, pro uh, change the rights or make trusty assignments so right click student files properties click on trustees, add trustees and as with our usual philosophy we'll choose groups rather than individual users in this case both lecturers and students by holding down the control key and selecting both for students, reading and file scan means that they can see the file, they can read the contents of the file, they can execute the file, which is fine, which is exactly what we want for students. For lecturers, we want them to be able to modify files, create new files, delete any old files or out of date files, and to rename files. And we'll leave. And obviously, 
the user will have default rights assigned for their own home directories. As far as the application directory, it is where we will keep files that users will need to execute. So therefore, let's again assign the appropriate rights. Trustees, or add a trustee, will again add lecturers. In this case, in this sense, lecturers, students, does not need to access this folder for whatever reason. But in order for lecturers just to be able to execute the files or the programs, they will just need file scan and read. They don't need any of the other rights as I don't want lecturers to be able to change, create or modify these programs. So let's cl click OK. It is very uh, very important that you, the users who are using the login scripts that they have the appropriate rights to the resources they are attempting to map because if they don't have the rights to the resources their commands won't be able to execute correctly okay so let's test this out okay if you remember a lecturer has rights to all those free directories whereas a student only has rights to their home directory and the student files so we will attempt to see what happens when someone does not have the necessary rights so let's log in as a lecturer first of all and as you can see first of all we still got our greeting second of all our L drive is mapped correctly our H drive home directory is mapped to the appropriate home directory for the user and finally our search drive is correct and then our profile and user login scripts are kicking in let's open up a Windows Explorer and you'll see that uh, there's the home drive there's the student files there's the application folder on the home directory I obviously have all the rights so therefore I can create new folders and delete files on the student files as a lecturer I should be able to create files and I should be able to delete files as well but on the applications apps folder we do not have the rights to create new files because we only are able to execute files Alright, so let's, uh, that's the lecturer's logging in correctly. Let's see if the student, what happens when the student tries to log in. The student again is in the free NWA2 organizational unit, and if you remember, the student's name is Erfel, password is password, and if you notice, if you, you will notice that there is an error. There's an error with the creating the search drive to the apps folder. It, this is because, if you remember, we did not give the students any rights to the apps folder and as a result they cannot see the folder and as a result they cannot map the folder. But you'll still notice that our greeting, which had all those variables associated with the user's name, time, etc. is still working correctly. Our home directory and our student files are all working correctly because they had rights to those things. You notice that the profile and the user login script did not execute. That's because this user, Erfel, who's a student, did not have did not have the profile associated with them and the user login script was only on the Alex user. Because in the absence of a user login script, you notice that the default login script executed instead. Obviously in this case we do not want this error message to appear on the student's login every time it looks a little bit messy so let's actually log back in as admin and instead of put placing the the instead of placing so instead of uh, placing the login script for everyone we will actually test if a user is a lecturer or not before we run the login script